Okay, we get it. So you don't like Kitten Clark. Why? 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 Is it because she's white? Wow. Go yellow here. So retired WNBA star Cheryl Swoops came into Gilbert Arena's podcast. And as always, when talking WNBA, Kaylin Clark is the topic of conversation. Because don't lie, there's nobody else that anybody cares about. So Cheryl, before the season started, you said you thought Angel would be a good pro. You didn't think she would come into the league immediately dominate. I'm not saying she's dominated. But what are your thoughts on Angel's rookie season so far? Um, For me, if rookie of the year was pick today, I give it to Angel. Okay. Yeah, I don't know about that. But the only thing that she does better than Caitlin is rebounds. She averages 12 points, 10 rebounds. Double-double. That's good, especially for a rookie at that. But that's it. That's where it ends. Just about every other stat is Caitlin Clark. From assists to points and now being the leader of her team who went from the worst team in the entire WNBA to right now a playoff team. Their teams have played three times this season. Caitlin's up 2-1. to one. Angel's field goal percentage is currently at 37%. Caitlin's is at 38%. Caitlin shoots threes. Logo threes. Steph Curry threes. Come on, son, son. There's a reason people want to see this girl. While Angel staying under the basket, like a center and women don't dunk so it's just a layup in their most recent game angel dropped a career high 25 points with 16 boards and the w to keep the race interesting but even though they lost caitlin filled up her stat sheet too 17 points a franchise record 13 assists six rebounds and four steals not too bad for the number one pick but cheryl's bias is obvious the same as all the other hate she gets from other women in the WNBA, and it just keeps making that girl bigger 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 and what do you think about her just kind of like she's embracing this kind of villain role and, and how that squad is kind of looked at? I think they play hard, they play physical, they're gonna do what they do. I don't even know what to say right now because I'm I am frustrated. <laughs> like I'm frustrated with it because, like I know a lot of people like it's not black and white, it's not a race thing. Mm. But is it? It's not supposed to be a race thing, but yes, she's using that exact car. And I agree. I think she's right. Just not for the reasons that she thinks she's talking about. It's actually the complete opposite. Everybody wants to hate on the white girl because she's doing for the WNBA what nobody else has been able to accomplish in a league that is more than two thirds black or lesbian women. <laughs> and here comes this freshman white girl that everybody, not even just the casuals, but household names are gravitating to. And this shit is hilarious too because pretty much all men are united in our consensus of the situation. We're just sitting back laughing at this. Watching women hate on women, even if they cannibalize themselves, because feelings matter, not logic. Compared to the men's league, men don't walk around hugging on kumbaya and shit, but veterans show respect to the new blood, and the new kids show nothing but love to the legends still playing the game. Prime example in the playoffs, KD and Anthony Edwards. Edwards talking shit and showing off to his face, because they're up in the series, and Kevin Durant is his idol, and KD shaking his head, loving it, because he knows it's the kid's time to shine. Nothing crazy, just mutual love. But the WNBA, my God. All of them, from current players to retired players to analysts, all throwing shades at this new young box star player that is literally doing exactly what the league has been praying for for decades. But she's white. Let me backtrack and let's talk about what a career in the WNBA has been like. Because these women have been crying, bitching about their pay since the inception of the WNBA. Look, these women are professional basketball players, but their pay is trash. The average nurse gets paid more than WNBA players, plumbers, electricians, truckers. Normally, this has not been a profession that you do to get rich. The minimum salary in the league is only about $63,000 compared to the NBA, which is in the millions yearly. So I feel you ladies, these women really do this for the love because there is no real crazy money at the end of that tunnel unless you become a star and get endorsement money because there is no money in the WNBA itself. Those contracts are dog shit and that stuff stanky. But this isn't an equal pays issue because again, the WNBA since it was founded has never once not lost money. Let me stop and say that shit again. For those of you that don't know, imagine this is a company. Since it was created decades ago, it has always lost money. Every single year is in the negatives. Year after year, everything is red. So how are they still in business, the old yellow man? You say, how can they afford to pay all these nurses their salaries? That's a goddamn good question, my friends. You see, when you are a spoiled brat born into a rich family, daddy got you. 
and that daddy is the NBA. This league has the NBA on child support, alimony, whatever it takes to keep the lights on. It's beneficial for both of them. The WNBA stays active and it's good PR for the NBA. They get to say, hey, look at those women over there. We support them. It's a write-off come tax season, but even if it wasn't, it's champ change. Even the average NBA player, it ain't gotta be LeBron or KD, anybody, anybody mid-tier gets paid more than the entire WNBA combined which is kind of crazy when you think about it. But again, it's a failing business without daddy. Now back to Caitlyn, right? And the original point I was trying to make. I'm sorry that rant took me longer than expected. Uh, I ramble sometimes, people. I'm sorry, I apologize. What Cheryl is really trying to say that Caitlyn Clark is getting this much clout because she's white, right? And I think she believes Angel should be getting that. That Angel's being discriminated on because she's black. Fucking cap, 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 cap. First off, even without Caitlyn in the picture, Angel's not even that much of a likable character. I'm sure she's a great person at home, but the persona she portrays, I'm sorry, but it ain't the best. It's not about where you're from or how you look. It's about how you carry yourself, your charisma, treat others. Like, you can even be the best player to ever play the game, but people outside of the game don't have to like you. They don't have to love you. They don't have to gravitate towards you. It's not the public's job to love you. Respect you, yes, but love and admiration, that's different. You can be mad. Some people got it, some don't. Where are the other countless white girls that have played in the WNBA? Why didn't they do it? If it's all a race thing, where are the other white girls that have been getting promoted for years in the WNBA? Where are they at? Where are the other stars? Tier 2, Tier 3, star level in the WNBA? They don't exist. Caitlyn's not even a star. She's literally a superstar. Not just in the WNBA, but outside of the game itself. Sort of like Michael Jordan. I'm not saying she's as big as Jordan, but relatively speaking to the WNBA, that's what she is. And Jordan was black. Nobody stopped him from achieving greatness couldn't be stopped he just had it in the 80s and 90s you could have liked them hated him it didn't matter he was must watch here's another sport tiger woods anybody uh, i digress and now caitlin clark comes in the league doing this shooting threes from way out back in a league where all women do is shoot layups even in the man's league layups ain't that special unless you're kyrie that boy layer game is different. Anyhow, more eyes on Caitlyn means more eyes on the league, the games, all the players, the storyline, the drama, which is what makes any good story interesting, which in time shortly after translates to more endorsements, more money, higher salaries for everybody. Simple economics. And, and I think what, what people are doing or saying when it comes to Angel Reese, when it comes to Kennedy Carter, when it comes to the Chicago sky, um... I think it's coming from people who don't really know the game and don't understand basketball. But I also think, I think Angel herself has handled the criticism, has handled all the not so good stuff that's coming her way. I think she's handled it very well for a rookie, for, don't, I, I don't know, how old is Angel, 22 Two. maybe? Yeah. I, I think she's handled it very well. So the reason why I say I think she's handled it well is because when you see the stuff that's coming her way, there's a she could handle it totally different. And I think she tries to keep it all basketball. Like the, vil the villain role. Y'all feel that pause there? This entire segment is filled with little moments like that, where you can see that all the men are trying to be cautious and careful in how they present their argument because they disagree, but they don't want to hurt anybody's sensitive ass feelings with their rebuttal, which is bullshit, man. Just fucking say what you have to say. And they're usually very good on this podcast of showing the other side of whatever topic is being discussed and not letting just one person or one side be completely biased and running the entire conversation. But she's a woman, so she gets her hand held. And I know she's a WNBA legend, et cetera, et cetera, but that shit shouldn't matter. I don't know if they were scared that she maybe wasn't going to return if they didn't cater to her feelings and treat her fairly. And I mean fairly from her perspective anyways, so she doesn't feel like she's being ganged up on by men. Because you could tell during this entire 30 minute segment of this podcast that every single question they asked her, you can tell by her facial expressions and demeanor exactly how she was going to answer each and every single one of those questions. And of course, now non-fans of the game, the quote unquote casuals are supposedly toxic now. But of course, they're only toxic when they are defending Caitlyn Clark because she herself never says anything. 
about anybody. So her fans come to the rescue, which is actually something Cheryl also touched on. <laughs> Listen to this. Cheryl says that Caitlyn knows her fans are going to defend her no matter what. So Caitlyn puts up a good girl image by not speaking or talking smack about anybody else as a strategy to bait all the fans to fight amongst themselves. So if Caitlyn speaks on all the bullshit going on with all the hating, she's a drama queen. And if she minds her business like she does, she's playing some evil psychological warfare. What kind of goofy ass fucking shit is this? Just say y'all don't like the girl and keep it moving. At least that shit is honest. Non-fans is what any league or sport needs to grow. You think everybody that tunes into the World Cup knows what offside means? Hell nah. They just tune in for the celebration. It's an event. That's not a bad thing. That shit is great. People get caught up in the energy and emotion of all the real fans and that kind of atmosphere gets everybody energized. It's the same thing with the Super Bowl. I bet you most people that tune in for a Super Bowl don't know what an option play is or a safety. Shit, they might not know what a Hail Mary is to tell you the truth. They just watch because the entire country's watching. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the Angel's not a good player. She's an amazing player and getting better. But the hypocrisy of the narrative that's going around needs to be talked about. I'm going to put the link to the original video down below and make sure to check out Gabriel Arena's podcast. It's pretty good. And like always, good people, those likes, comments, pretty please. I need that. And I'll see you on my next rant. Yes, sir, that's my baby.